All right. Good morning, Thursday morning. And I'm sure you all know that Thursday is a Guru day. Even though for a Guru Bhagat every day is a Guru day, but there's a designated day for Guru. So Guru Bar bhi kehte hai. So Thursday. And at the ashram, this is a tradition that we do Havan every Thursday. So even during COVID days, we've been doing Havan. Uh, sometimes people come, sometimes uh, just, uh, uh, I have done Havan by myself also, but uh, uh, two, three people. So, so anytime you want to come, just come on over. Okay. So, but let's uh, do the prayers before we start our today's class. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parbrahm, Tasmai Shri, Guru Venamaha, Om Bhubhu Vaswaha, Tatsavitra Varenayam, Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi, Diyo Yonaha Prachodayat, Astoma Satgamya, Tamsoma Jyotirgamya, Mrityor ma amritam gamya, om sehna vavatu, sehna bhunaktu, sehviryam karvavahi, tejasvi navadhi tamastu, ma vidvishavahi, om shanti, shanti, shanti. <coughs> so on Thursday, sir, we study Avdhut Gita, and then towards the end, we do the meditation. 10, 15 minutes and I always encourage you to meditate every day at least once a day if not more so I'm sure some of you are seasoned meditators you may not need this help but people who are just starting out with this discipline of meditating every day I have some important tips of course you are supposed to sit straight choose the right time and make sure you try to meditate at the same time every single day. Same place, same time, it helps to cultivate this habit. See, just like when we sleep at the same time every day, we fall asleep. We know we are ready to sleep. The same way when we eat the same time, our body says, yes, I'm hungry. Okay, so meditation time should be fixed. Okay. Everything else, sure, we need to do. We can always maneuver here and there, but not meditation time. The difference between meditation and prayer is uh, because we need to do prayers also at the same time. And then meditation also, both we need to do. Prayer is when we are uh, thanking God, we are talking to God. Meditation is when we are quietening our mind and trying to listen to God. Both are important. So I have nine important meditation tips for you. <clears throat> Number one, to meditate a short time with depth is better than to meditate for a long time with the mind running wild. Okay. Do not force yourself in the beginning to sit for a long time. Strive for a shorter but deeper meditation. Gradually you will see that you will become accustomed to going deep and you will enjoy lengthening the time. But in the beginning, short and deep meditation. Number two, don't feel badly if you find yourself too restless to meditate deeply. Calmness will come in time if you practice regularly. So regularity is more important. Never ever accept the thought that meditation is not for you. Calmness is your eternal true nature. Number three, one time a disciple 
was having difficulty with his meditation, he asked, am I not trying to, trying hard enough? Am I not trying hard enough? The master answered, you are trying too hard. You are using too much willpower. Nervousness comes. Just be relaxed and natural. So tip number three is just be relaxed when you meditate. Because as long as you try hard to meditate, you won't be able to meditate. Just like if you are trying very hard to sleep, you will not sleep. This very struggle with it becomes detrimental. So that's why in the beginning, it's better to emphasize just a relaxation. Don't get excited. Do not become impatient in your efforts to meditate. So tip number three is be patient, move towards your divine goal calmly with the tranquility. Some people, they think that they are falling asleep when they are meditating. So how to remain awake during meditation? Squeeze your eyes shut several times, then open them wide and stare straight ahead. And straight ahead, you should have an altar. So if you think you're falling asleep, just do this practice. In fact, repeat this practice once or twice more. Sleepiness will cease to bother you. In meditation, we try to go beyond thinking. As long as thoughts enter the mind, you are functioning on the conscious level. When dreaming, you are in the subconscious level. But in meditation, we go even deeply than that. Super consciousness. Then you will feel centered in the bliss. So that's why the thoughts, they have to cease. In that bliss state, you are aware of yourself. So in order to reach there, you have to make this habit. Our inner nature loves to meditate because that's where the greatest joy is. So tip number six is watch your ego. Ego is the one which is really, is reluctant to meditate. Ego doesn't want you to meditate. But you got to be stronger than that. You are not the ego. Ego is just one of the upathis. We got to firmly believe in it that no, my real nature, me, I love to meditate because I want to listen to my God's voice. I want to commune with him. Okay, do not let the ego come in between, at least for those few minutes. And remember, anybody who wants to become proficient in anything, even worldly affairs, like if somebody wants to be a concert pianist, I've heard that they practice 12 hours a day. And that is only a piano. 
और दोज ओलंपिक प्लेयर्स वेदर दे आर स्विमिंग और वेदर डूइंग एनी काइंड ऑफ अदर एक्टिविटीज फॉर आवर्स एंड आवर्स दे प्रैक्टिस सो देन हाउ कैन यू एक्सपेक्ट टू नो गाड इफ यू डोंट प्रैक्टिस लाइक दैट any one who makes a sincere effort on the spiritual path will surely reach his goal everybody for the worldly ambition everybody cannot reach there but for this to know god all of us can reach there there are not limited seats over there there is not just one gold medal and one silver medal so we all need to try keep on practicing number 8 to try to feel when walking out of doors that everything around you is part of your own expanded awareness so it's not only while you are sitting down and meditating even the moments other than your meditation on your meditation seat imagine the breeze as god's breath blowing over the world inspiring all of us giving us all life feel that connection feel that unity you will see that your meditation will heighten you will be meditating all the time you are sitting down in active meditation will become active meditation that's how the saints meditate their life is like that and the last tip i want to talk about is meditate more and more deeply until calmness and joy becomes your second nature no matter what you are calm no matter what you are peaceful it is not difficult in fact the thinking is difficult our thoughts keeps us apart from this our inner nature never think that this divine joy this calmness is away from you distant from you then it will be with you 24/7 so in other words every day practice sitting down then remind yourself more and more while doing your other duties you will see that you will never be separated and that's what we are learning from this great yogi dattatreya ji that's why in this third chapter where we are learning is like a very poetically he is telling us this is what gyan is this is our goal is so let's start <clears throat> with verse number 16 chapter number 3 but if anybody has any question comment before we start we can ask it's okay because our classes are always uh, when we had the live classes they were always very interactive sri jyoti desai has a question yeah I yes. just want to ask um, during your meditation if you uh, your joints or you become stiff, it's okay to change the position. Yes, yes, definitely, it's okay, okay because as long as you are still aware of your joints, because ultimately what will happen is you are going to disidentify from your joints too. But as long as you are and you feel little stiffness in there, it's okay to move. it's okay to change position but keep your mind focused though okay if you need to just uh, move your shoulders a little bit stretch your legs a little bit that's fine but choose the sitting position <clears throat> which is comfortable to you 
and before meditation or after meditation make a habit of doing few yoga asanas every day yes okay because this movement of the body the joints is very very important yes okay so but it's okay to move yeah we we, we should not uh, <clears throat> feel the hurt the pain you remember in the last class or couple of um, retreats before rishi patanjali told us uh, because in asana we said to meditate and that asana has to be sukham and sthiram right so it has to be stable also it has to be pain free also so if you are feeling the pain it's okay there is there's no don't have any kind of a fear in your mind that if i do this i'm doing something wrong no it's a mental thing because ultimately this sitting down meditation will have to become a active meditation walking meditation so when you are walking you are moving your limbs but what is staying connected is your mind so it's the stability of the mind which we are working on okay so good question anybody else no okay so let's uh, um, we ended our last week's class with verse number 15 and over there dattatriya ji is tell, telling us i never performed any action which could generate anguish and misery i never had a mind which could function by the contact of pain and pleasure i have no source of ego in me i am existence knowledge bliss and boundless as space so you can see that in order to reach to this stage we need to practice also and the practice is meditation okay so gyan amritam samrasam gagan upamo aham this is what we need to experience we are all that it's not only dattatreya ji is this this is each and every one of us our own nature because normally what happens we are bogged down with the anguish and the misery pain and the pleasure this duality we keeps on living with then we think that is that's how it is no that's not how it is i am existence knowledge bliss and boundless as a space that's what i am but i have forgotten with the help of this sadhana i need to go back to this let's start with verse number 16 nishkamp kamp nidhanam na vikalap kalpam swapan prabhod nidhanam na hit ahitam hi nisar sar nidhanam na char acharam hi gyan amritam samrasam gagan upama aham nishkamp means unwavering okay so kampna kampna means when something is shaking something is wavering so unwavering nishkamp kamp means wavering nidhanam destruction devoid of nidhanam no means not vikalap in decision kalpam decision swapan dream prabodh waking state again nidhanam destruction no means not hit means good a hit not good so it also means evil a uh, hit he means therefore ni sar free from essence sar means essence <coughs> nidhanam devoid of na means not char char means moving movement a uh, char cessation of movement he means therefore 
gyan is knowledge amritam immortality sam means one rasam means essence gagan sky upmaha light aham i am both stillness and vibration like a wavering and unwavering doubt and determination it's like a decision and indecision they end in brahma they are not in brahma both waking and dreaming states good and evil terminate in brahma movement and cessation of movement are not in bram i am existence knowledge bliss and boundless as space so all the things we see good and the evil pain and the pleasure waking and the dreaming state doubt and the determination all of this is part of this created world manifested world in brahm there is nothing like that नो वेद्य वेदक इदम न हेतु तर्क्यम वाचाम अगोचरम इदम न मना न बुद्धि एवं कथम ही भवता कथयामी तत्व ज्ञान अमृतम समरसम गगन उपमा अहम नो नो मीन्स नॉट इन डीड वेद्य नोएबल वेद कम इंस्ट्रूमेंट इदम मीन्स दिस न इज नॉट च मीन्स एंड हेतु तर्क्यम रीजन और द कॉज हेतु हेतु एंड तर्क सी हेतु मीन्स कॉज तर्क मीन्स रीजन वाचाम ऑफ वर्ड्स a gocharam beyond idam means this na mana not mind na buddhi not intellect evam means das katham how he means therefore bhavtah to you kathyame can i speak tatvam truth again gyan is knowledge amritam immortality sam means one rasam essence gagan sky upma like aham i am brahm is neither the knower nor the knowable it is beyond speculation and logical reasoning see the speculation and the reasoning we use for the manifested world it is beyond the cognizance of speech mind and intellect so that's why we say that no matter how deep the languages cannot explain brahm no matter how pure the mind is no matter how sharp the intellect is we got to ultimately transcend that all of those equipments those are the equipment given to us to live a life in this world then how can i tell you about brahm the ultimate reality because the students they were asking so that's why this teacher is saying i cannot tell you 
you got to experience it yourself. Then this experience is not through the mediation of something. It is not that you'll have a sharp intellect and you will know. We need to have a sharp intellect so that it doesn't become a hurdle for us. We want a pure mind so that it doesn't become an obstacle for us. So how can I tell you about Brahm, the ultimate reality? I am existence, knowledge, bliss, and boundless as space. Nirbhin bhin rahitam parmartham tatvam. Antra bahi nahi katham parmartham tatvam. Prak sambhavam na charatam. Nehi vastuhu kinchit gyan amritam samrasam gagan upmaha aham. Nirbhin, undivided. Bhin means divided. Rahitam, free from. Parmartham, supreme reality. Tatvam, true nature. Antar means inside, bahi outside. Na he, not therefore. Katham means how, parmartham, supreme reality. See, there are a lot of words which are coming again and again. So this is giving you a chance for remembering all this. This is one way to learn any language, repetition. Katham means how parmartham supreme reality, tattvam true nature. Prak, prior to, like a before. Sambhavam, origin, like a causation. Nurture, not end. Ratam, attached, like a involved. See, like a virat or veragya, that's a detachment. Rat is like a rati, that's a attachment or involvement. Rat. Nahi, not. Vastu, thing or substance. <clears throat> Kinchit, anything at all. Gyan is knowledge, amritam, immortality. Sam means one, rasam essence, gagan sky, upma, like aham I am. Brahm is neither undivided, not divided. Indeed, it has no inside or outside. Brahm is not something which originated in the past. And subsequently will cease to exist. That's why it's called eternal. There was no date when Brahm was born. There are no father and mother of Brahm. He says, I am existence, knowledge, bliss, and boundless as space. Let's look at this word, neither undivided nor divided. Vedic philosophies, they talk about three kinds of divisions. Swagat bhed, sajatiye bhed, and vijatiye bhed. These are technical terms I would like you to know. Swagat bhed. Swagat bhed, it's a division of oneself. Swagat. For example, a tree has many divisions, roots, trunk, branch, leaf, flower, fruits. It's like a same body, several divisions. Swagat. Sajatiye bhed. 
the division in the same species such as pine trees redwood tree mango tree maple tree oak tree they are all trees so jati is the tree but there are so many different divisions so jati e bhed and the third kind of a division is vi jati e bhed division of a different species like a tree stone water air okay animals human beings so those are vi jati e bhed so so gat bhed sa jati e bhed vi jati e bhed in brahm there's none of that there's no bhed there's no division so brahm is neither undivided nor divided we cannot even talk about it there is no inside or outside we can about this body we can say that there is a outside there is a inside but in brahm you cannot talk like that brahm is not something which originated this body originated at a certain point in time and it will perish but brahm is not like that that's why he said i am i am that brahm once we experience that only then we can say that gyanamritam samrasam gagan upamo aham the way this great rishi is telling us and he is not saying all this just to talk about himself no he is just in that ecstasy he is explaining to his students this is what the reality is and you are that too because there's no division then he says rag adi dosh rahitam tu aham ev tatvam dev adi dosh rahitam tu aham ev tatvam sansar shok rahitam tu aham ev tatvam gyan amritam samrasam gagan upama aham rag attachment adi etc dosh fault clearly attachment has been explained by all the rishis that it's a fault but still we think oh gosh i cannot live without it once we start understanding it's a flaw it's a fault it's a negative trait only then we can let it go that understanding has to be there so rag is attachment adi means etc that means the other dosha so not just attachment alone and what are the others jealousy hatred desires the whole group of them kaam krodh lobh moh antkar फ्री फ्रॉम तू अहम तू मीन्स वेरिली अहम मीन्स आई एव मीन्स दस तत्व एसेंस दैव डिवाइन आदि एटसेट्रा दोष फॉल्ट रहीतम फ्री फ्रॉम तू अहम वेरिली आई ev means das tatvam essence sansar the world shok means saro rahitam free from again tu aham verily i ev means das tatvam essence and the last line gyan means knowledge amritam immortality sam means one rasam essence gagan sky upama like aham i am so dattatrey ji saying truly i am brahm free from passion jealousy hatred and the rest ragaadi i am that reality devoid of sufferings caused by physical 
और सुपर नेचुरल एजेंसीज लाइक दैव दैवादी दोष रहितम तो अहमेव तत्व आई एम दैट ट्रूथ अनटचड बाय ग्रीफ एंड मिजरी ऑफ द वर्ल्ड आई एम एग्जिस्टेंस नॉलेज ब्लिस एंड बाउंडलेस स्पेस so whether there's a attachment to this worldly existence or whether there's any kind of a threat to from that daiv could be a hurricane could be a tornado could be a earthquake or there could be a any other kind of a disaster or this pandemic cannot hurt the soul aham sure it can hurt the body or other disasters can hurt our property but we are not that this is what this great rishi is telling us i am that reality devoid of sufferings caused by physical or even supernatural agencies i am that truth untouched by grief and misery of the world the grief and the misery is about the worldly things something we think that it's ours and it can be taken away and there's a grief we lose something we can never lose this who we are that's why he said i am existence knowledge bliss and boundless as a space during our meditations see all these verses should help us to meditate at a deeper level and when we understand who we are we'll become a better human beings when we are peaceful inside we will spread the peace outside too then he says in the next one 20 sathan treyam yadi cha neti katham turiyam kal treyam yadi cha neti katham disha cha shantam पदम ही परमम परमार्थम तत्व ज्ञान अमृतम समरसम गगन उपमा अहम स्थान स्थान मीन्स द स्टेट्स ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस त्रयम थ्री यदि मीन्स इफ च मीन्स एंड नेति आर नाट सी नेति वर्ड व्हेन यू ब्रेक इट डाउन न इति कथम हाउ turiyam fourth state of consciousness kal times trayam three yadi cha if and <clears throat> neti not these katham how disha direction cha means and shantam peaceful padam path he means therefore parmam greatness parmartham supreme truth tatvam essence and last line gyan means knowledge amritam immortality sam means one rasam essence gagan sky upmaha like aham i am how can there be the fourth like a transcendental state turiya state when there are not three states <laughs> got to think about this little deeply what he is saying over here normally we get lost in these things he says how can there be the fourth when there are not three states what are those three states waking dreaming and sleeping we are so entrapped into this he is trying to with these very strong verses he is trying to shake us he is shaking our upadhis out of us because these are the upadhis upadhis are any 
thing which 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 has superimposed on us that's your body so he says how can there be the fourth when there are not three states in brahm how can the four cardinal points of space exist without the threefold division of time truly brahm is the supreme abode of peace shantam padam hi parmam parmartham tatvam so ultimate shanti is there that is the abode of shanti padam param i am existence knowledge bliss and boundless space next one dirgh lagu punha iti eh na me vibhago विस्तार संकटम इति इह नामे विभाग कोनम ही वर्तुलम इति इह नामे विभाग ज्ञान अमृतम समरसम गगन उपमा अहम दीर्घ दीर्घ मींस लॉन्ग लघु मींस शॉर्ट पुनः वंस अगेन इति मींस दस इह मींस हियर no is not me means me we bhag division vistar expands or wide vistar sankatam narrow or contradiction it means thus it means here no me not me vibhaga division konam triangular he means therefore vartulam circular it means thus it means here na me not me vibhaga division gyan is knowledge amritam immortality sam means one rasam essence gagan sky upama light aham i am i myself again there are no such divisions as what kind of a divisions long or short broad or narrow circular or angular i am existence knowledge bliss and boundless as space okay so our focus has been majority of our life on non self tall short slim fat white black rich poor not enough emphasis on who we are so that's why with all these verses he is shaking all that non self out of us which has been so much part of our thinking all the time so that's why he is repeating again and again ज्ञान अमृतम समरसम गगन उपमो अहम इफ यू कैन इवन रिमेम्बर दैट ट्राई टू से दैट फ्यू टाइम्स एवरी डे होपफुली इट विल टेक सम सम स्पेस इन अस ज्ञान अमृतम समरसम लेट्स लुक एट वन मोर and then we'll meditate <clears throat> mataha pitaha aadi tanne aadi name kadachit jatam mritam na che manaha na ch me kadachit nirvyakulam sthiram idam parmartham tatvam gyan amritam samrasam gagan upama aham mata mother pita father 
आदि एटसेट्रा तन्य तन्य मीन्स सान आदि एटसेट्रा न मे किदाचित आई हैड नेवर जातम बोर्न मृतम डाइड न च नॉट एंड मन माइंड न च मे कदाचित एंड आई हैड नेवर निर्व्याकुलम अनट्रबल्ड सी व्याकुल मीन्स ट्रबल निर्व्याकुल अनट्रबल्ड स्थिरम स्टेबल इदम दिस परमार्थम सुप्रीम ट्रूथ तत्व ट्रू नेचर ज्ञान इज नॉलेज अमृतम इमोर्टैलिटी सम मीन्स वन रसम एसेंस गगन स्काई उपमा लाइक अहम आई एम आई हैव नीदर मदर नार फादर नार चिल्ड्रन I have neither birth nor death nor desire. Truly, the supreme reality is unshakable and tranquil. Nirvyakulam sthiram idam parmarth tatvam. This is the reality. This is what I am. I am existence, knowledge, bliss, and boundless as space. Okay, so he is. with these very strong verses taking us to the reality of us who we are who we are he is not saying don't do your duties because right now we are not at the level of avadhut when we are avadhut then there's no duties either because then you don't identify with any of it right now we do identify so there are duties keep doing the duties but keep meditating on this to know who you are in essence bring this truth in your life at least for few minutes a day so that's why i talked about the meditation and i hope you guys are doing it practicing it need to practice okay let's stop it here because we are supposed to meditate also so let me do the the shanti mantra om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaye purnameva visheshyate om shanti 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 om